pay attention to your pain reach out and find your comfort take a walk and play some music make the time to start the healing let the healing begin let the healing Look to the sky and breathe it in. Look to the sky and breathe it in. Feel the sunshine on your skin. Feel the sunshine on your skin. And let your life resume again. And let your life resume again. Pay attention to your pain. Reach out and find your comfort. Take a walk and play some music Make the time to start the healing Let the healing begin Let the healing begin Look to the sky and breathe it in Look to the sky and breathe it in Feel the sunshine on your skin Feel the sunshine on your skin and let your life begin again and let your life resume again pay attention to your pain reach out and find your comfort take a walk and play some music make the time to start the healing let the healing begin, let the healing begin. Look to the sky and breathe it in, look to the sky and breathe it in. Feel the sunshine on your skin, feel the sunshine on your skin. And let your life resume again, and let your life resume again. Good morning. And uh, sorry, I, I missed my cue here. <laughs> Good morning to all of you who are here right now. And we are going to get started with our Sunday service right now. And we're going to start like we always do by singing thank you for this day. So lean back and uh, listen as Michael sings this wonderful song. For the day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. My radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing. This healing, this healing day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. And thank you for joining us here at the live Zoom Sunday service of Unity Spiritual Center of San Francisco, which we are also live streaming on Facebook right now. 
I'm so glad that you have found us in this brave new virtual world as we've been discovering new ways of staying connected to you during this time. So we're going to put all of you on mute, let's see, and then you don't have to worry about background noise. It's wonderful to see all your faces. I'm going to put it on the gallery view here so I can see all of you. So great to see your faces. And I want you to know that I am keeping all of you hi Judy, uh, in my prayers. And if you're joining us for the first time or if you're watching this on Facebook uh, and you've never been to one of our services, I hope that you will consider us when this sheltering in place is over. And I will look forward to meeting you um, when all of this is under control and we know and affirm that it will be um, controlled. We are already seeing some very hopeful signs uh, in our nation. So as I said, I put all of you on mute during our service so that you don't have to worry about background noise. And what that means is that when we're singing or when we're doing responsive readings, uh, we won't be able to hear your voice, but we do encourage you to go ahead and join with us in singing and praying um, in the privacy of your own home. Now there's going to be two exceptions to that, and one is when I'm going to ask for a volunteer to read the daily word, and the other is when we do our uh, prayer uh, portion of the service where we ask if you'd like to, to share a prayer with your spiritual family. So if you'd like to read the Daily Word and you don't have a copy of it handy, um, go right now, log on to dailyword.org. You will find the Daily Word reading for today. And when we get to that part of the service, I'll um, see if one of you wants to read it out loud for us and then I'll unmute you. But for now, you got here and we are here together. So just take a moment to relax, to take a deep breath, and dedicate this time to being in your inner sanctuary where we are always safe and guided and at peace. And, and use this time to let go of any worries or cares of the day. Just um, let your heart open to connecting virtually with all of us in this community and with the God of your understanding. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we celebrate the truth that our God is love, as expressed in Unity's foundation statement, which you're invited to say along with me. There is only one presence and one power, active as the universe and as my life, God the good, omnipotent. So take another deep breath now. Love that photo, Marcy, on the slide. That's excellent. Um, so I get to see things I don't usually get to see. Usually my back is to the slides. I'm enjoying the slideshow along with you. And so again, just take this time to be comfortable. The only thing you need to do in this hour is to open yourself up to the love and the goodness of the divine as you relax into this sacred time and space at Unity Spiritual Center. For almost 75 years now, we at Unity Spiritual Center have celebrated and honored people of every culture, of every creed, of every race, of every age, of every, what did I miss? Culture, creed, religion, <clears throat> every age, every race, and every lifestyle, knowing that there are many paths to God, many faces of God, many names for God, but only one God. Seeing through eyes of oneness and acknowledging our oneness, we know that God indwells all people and is expressed through each of us in unique, special, and individual ways. Unity offers positive, practical, progressive spiritual teachings and tools 
that honor the universal truth in all religions and respects each individual's right to choose a spiritual path. I'm going to take a moment now to light our worship candle like we do every Sunday. And as you look at the flame, see if you can see that flickering. As you look at the flame of this candle that we light every Sunday and that I keep lit for as long as we are meeting together, remember that. Remember what that looked like, that beautiful, warm flame. Because you yourself have a divine flame within that you are a spark of God, an individualized expression of God. And boy, do we need these beautiful lights in our world right now. Remember, when you look or think about that candle, that God does God's work in the world through the movements of your hearts and your hands. Our vision here at Unity Spiritual Center and the opportunity for you and each one of us here is that you discover the power within you to create the life of your dreams that you have peace of mind and deep happiness that you enjoy joyous and loving relationships with yourself with spirit and with others that you spend your days doing what you love and feel called to do and even during this time of sheltering in place that you find at least one thing to really nourish yourself with uh, every day and most of all know that your life matters that you make a difference and that the world is a better place because you're here we need you. So let's take a moment now just to pause and gather ourselves and listen to a beautiful musical selection by our music director extraordinaire, Michael Hatfield. All right, I've written a, a tune for today and uh, it, it sounds like a hymn, it smells like a hymn, and we'll all be able to sing it for like a hymn. It's not very difficult, so you'll hear a couple bars for an intro, and then off we go. We sing for God and Mother. We sing for life and love. Our song shall reach the heavens and light the sky above. Everyone came from someone when our life began. We were nurtured, we were loved, someone held our hand. In this moment, let us thank you for the life we live. We have grown and we have thrived with so much more to give. We sing for God and Mother. We sing for life and love. Our song shall reach the heavens and light the sky above. Like a flower we have blossomed, reaching for the sun. We are blessed and we are grateful for all that you've done. In this moment, let us thank you, every daughter, every son, for the gift of life you gave us. We are thankful, everyone. 
We sing for God and Mother. We sing for life and love. Our song shall reach the heavens and light the sky above. Mm. Thank you so much, Michael. Welcome. So as we continue to get comfortable and relax even more deeply into this time of worship, prayer, and meditation, let us open our hearts to receive the message of today's daily word. If you would like to read the daily word, um, just wave your hand in front of your webcam and I'll call on you and we'll unmute you. Did I see, I saw Karen moving forward. Karen in Switzerland, but no, okay. Anyone like to read the daily word today? Kathleen Russell, our board president, would you please read us the daily word? Sure. Thank you. Am I unmuted? Yes. You are. Okay. Uh, the word for today is Mother's Blessings. I honor all mothers and am grateful for their love. I bless my mother and am grateful to her for the gift of nurturing love. Whether my mother is still with me or has passed on, her love still lies in my heart and her wisdom con continues to inspire me. I am grateful for the many ways my mother has blessed me. I also feel deep appreciation and tender affection for all those who have blessed me with the selfless gift of motherly love. I would not be who I am without them. Through the living example of the mothers in my life, I pass along the blessing of a mother's care and devotion as I embrace opportunities to share an affirming thought an encouraging word, a smile, or a simple act of kindness. I honor my mother and all mothers as I share the love of God that never fails. And the scripture reading is, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. And that's from Proverbs 31, 26. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathleen. That's beautiful. Unity Spiritual Center is a center of prayer and healing. And during this time of shelter in place, I want you to know that you're always welcome to call in and leave a message. Uh, that phone number is 415-566-4122. Again, 415-566-4122. So you're always welcome to leave a, a prayer request, send one or email one. Um, and let's now take just a moment to hold the prayer requests of our community and our hearts, both those that have been written or spoken and those that are unwritten and unspoken. We have such a beautiful community stretching worldwide with Karen joining us from Switzerland. Uh, John Antoni, I see you and I can't even tell you how great it is to see you. So glad that you joined us today. All your beautiful faces. We love you. We're so glad that you found a way to be with us. So again, let's just hold all the prayer requests of our prayer community in our hearts. And let's know that regardless of the circumstances that they may be facing, we know that our God is bigger than that. And let's know for everyone that whatever the appearances may be, Divine love, mother, father love is present in their lives. That, it, that mother, father love is enfolding them and that divine order is taking place. So now is the time to make our prayers audible. 
and to share your prayer needs to your spiritual family here so that we can stand with you and support you. So after we sing the first part of the song, which Michael will lead us through, you have a particular prayer request. You can either mark it in the chat or again, the quick way seems to be just to wave in front of the webcam and we will unmute you so you can say your prayer request aloud. We are connected by the heart. Where do you end? Where do I start? Whatever you feel, I feel too. You're a part of me. I'm a part of you. Your prayer is my prayer too. Your prayer is my prayer too. Valerie, you're unmuted. I would like to um, ask for prayers for my sister, Liz, who's facing some health challenges. And also for Michael's daughter, Tess, who is also. Your prayer is my prayer to. Lydia, you're on. Oh, yeah. I pray that most people let go of their fears and remain joyful. Your prayer is my prayer too. ask for prayers for my brother who has a temporary health condition. Your prayer is my prayer too. See, Carol has her hand up. Carol Bailey, you're unmuted. Carol? Hello. Hello, Carol. Did, did you have a prayer request? Okay. Pray for peace and serenity. Your prayer is my prayer too. I would, oh, go ahead. That's all right. Go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to pray for my sister in law, Anne, who has said had a return of the COVID disease. Mm. Your prayer is my to we also have a time during our service where we invite you to share your joys, your blessings, things that you're thankful for, 
anything that you would like to share with your community here so that we can celebrate with you this is the time to do that now Valerie go ahead well we had wonderful news this week um, Miles and Jenna became engaged and also I would spoke with Brian Lance and he is doing fabulous he they said neck in two weeks he can start playing golf and he is walking six miles a day right now See, Ethel's got her hand up. Ethel. Uh, hold on, Ethel. Okay, Ethel, you're unmuted. Okay, so Brian told me he's playing golf tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! He's doing really well. Does this doctor know? <laughs> uh, I think so. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, I wanted to say um, how grateful I am to have my, uh, my youngest daughter home and We've been having a wonderful time together. And there are some um, hopefully positive things that we're taking from this stay at home shelter in place. Anyone else like to share a blessing? Josephine. Oh, Hold on just a second, Josephine. I'm back. There you go. Yeah, okay. I'm thankful for my family for my loving husband and children and for getting breakfast in bed today. <laughs> He's choosing. I'm thankful for this technology that is allowing me to yeah, see right. all of you. Um, when you, when you notice me kind of uh, looking to the side, what I'm doing is scrolling through all the pictures and seeing all of you. I'm so grateful to be, hey, Kira, I'm so grateful to be able to do that, to be able to keep this connection with you and, and some of you who we haven't seen in a while. And as I mentioned, somebody who's even joining us from Europe. So uh, we are blessed okay. by this technology. I'm not going to say. Here we go. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful for all that I have. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. I am so grateful. I am so blessed. Hmm. I'm thinking about the skit that I saw last night on Saturday Night Live. Did anybody else watch it? <clears throat> um, okay, then I will give you a quick version. But it was um, a Zoom service done by a church. <laughs> and I almost posted it on our, on our website, but I thought, well, maybe I better not. It was a little bit objectionable, possibly. But... Um, it had the preacher talking about the Zoom machine and and people who were yelling at their kids in the background. It made me laugh. <laughs> but I digress. That, that is not what I'm going to talk about today. Now you're going to make me watch it. <laughs> I know. I know. Go check it out. It was pretty funny. Oh, well, today is the day on which we celebrate Mother's Day, right? We've already had a couple people mention that. And this Mother's Day is clearly unlike any that we've ever known. The global pandemic has us sheltering in place, which means that our usual Mother's Day celebrations uh, for many of us are gonna be very different this year. And so I, I do want to acknowledge um, that even mothers under the best circumstances may be feeling a little bit sad today because they may have the um the barrier of zoom they may not be able to hug their kids or their grandkids in person um and i also want to acknowledge that mother's day in general can be a tough one for people for many different reasons 
And so be, before I begin the lesson, I want to continue a tradition that I started a number of years ago. And that is to read a poem by the artist Shiloh Sophia titled, A Mama Day Blessing for All Kinds of Mothers. This day, we honor and celebrate the women who have given life to us, the women who give life to ideas, the women who died giving life, the women who wanted to have a child but didn't get to, the women who right now are tilling their fertile soil for new seed. This is for the women who chose not to have a child but have many children, the women who are in captivity, the women who are free, those who were mothered well, and those who had crazy mamas, because any mama that did not love you well was not well enough. This is for the women who are struggling this moment to care for their babies, and the women who right now snuggle with little ones under feather comforters, for those whose mamas have gone on, and for those who are mamas to be, for women who miscarried precious life, and those who carried many, for single mamas who want their mate, and for married mamas who want to be seen and heard, for those who never got to have a mama hold them, and for those whose mamas, uh, for those mamas whose children will not speak to them, for happy mamas and sad mamas and the great mama of all, and the mama who gave birth to God, and most of all, for all women and men who are in need of remothering. So that pretty much covers us all, doesn't it? And today, you know, thinking about what to speak about on Mother's Day, I wanted to speak again about mother power, which is a feminine energy that you don't have to be a woman to possess. In fact, all of us possess it, but not all of us tap into it. And I'm going to draw again from a book that I read about, um, I don't know, 16, 16 years ago, 15, 16 years ago, right around the time that I became a mother. It's a book called Mother Power, which moved me very deeply because it was all about this energy, this incredible energy um, that is distilled uh, in which we call mother energy. So in this book that was written by a woman named Jacqueline Horner Plumes, she outlines aspects of that force within us all that is committed to the well-being of those around us and provides sustenance for the living. And given where we are right now, wouldn't you say that we're seeing a lot of, thankfully, we're seeing a lot of mother energy at work? You know, certainly among all the caregivers, the nurses, and the doctors who are working tirelessly to tend uh, to people who need their care. Now in the book that I read, she describes several characteristics that are, that are, are, that are at the heart of mother power. And I'm gonna look at three of them today because each of them that I'm about to talk about are also aspects of spiritual living. <clears throat> They are the quality of being fearlessly protective, the quality of being a peacemaker, and the quality of giving. So fearlessly protecting, peacemaking, giving, I think you would agree that all are qualities that are deeply needed in our world today. So we'll look at them one by one. In the first chapter of her book, the author of Mother Power talks to this fierce love, this idea of fierce love, and a neat quality of what she calls being fearlessly protective. She tells the stories of a number of true life mothers, mothers who risked their own lives to keep their children safe. And you may have heard me tell this particular example before. 
because she gave an account of the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo, mothers in Argentina whose older children were taken by the military junta that was in power in the 70s and early 80s. Mothers whose sons and daughters disappeared forever. Hard to imagine what that must have felt like. And in fact, during that time in Argentina, 30,000 people disappeared forever. They were taken by the military and never to be seen alive again. And a group of mothers, these were not mother, these were not women who had any particular power other than this deep love and maternal energy um, and their, their, their grieving and their desperation to find their kids. And they banded together to make sure that this would come to a stop. To make sure that everybody knew about these terrible things that were going on. And in 1983, the junta fell and democracy returned to Argentina. The mothers of the Plaza de Mayo know that their protests, their willingness to risk their very lives to publicize what was happening, were instrumental in overflowing the Argentine dict dictators. Now that is a great example of what it means to be fearlessly protective. Now thankfully here in the United States we don't have to worry about our children being taken away by the junta in the middle of the night, but there are obviously other issues that mothers in this country deal with and other issues in which we can apply this quality of being fearlessly protective that we all have. And again, men have this too, men and women alike. And well, again, again, as we while we may not have the the fear for our lives that the mothers of the Plaza de Mayo did, we still may have other fears to conquer. So take this time just to start thinking about what person, place, or thing, or cause are you fearlessly protective of? Now that could be a child, it could be our spiritual community, it could be the peace movement, it could be an endangered species, or it could be other species. I know that a number of you are, are coming to this call with, with animals. Uh, Valerie has her baby kittens again, which she fosters, and that's something obviously that she's fearlessly protective of. And the idea here by asking you those questions is, is that it doesn't have to be a big thing. You know, when you ask yourself the question, who or what needs your protection and how can you begin to help? It doesn't have to be a big thing. Um, there are things that need our attention that are on a relatively small scale. So, you know, this could be something as small as, you know, writing a city councilman to see if things in your district could be changed, like maybe there's a stop sign that needs to be built at a busy intersection. I can think of one in my neighborhood. I am embarrassed to admit I haven't written a letter to my councilman, but I just might. I guess that's a perfect example of a way of being fearlessly protective, and it's on a smaller scale. It can be as simple as making a point to put food scraps in the compost bin and recyclables in the blue bin instead of the trash can. And these days, of course, being fearlessly protective includes physical distancing and wearing a mask when you're out in public. Now, why do we do this? If anybody's unclear, unclear about that, it's to be fearlessly protective. It's not so much to keep yourself safe, but it's to keep others safe in case you're asymptomatic. That is one way that right now today, we all can be fearlessly protective. But of course, there are so many things that need that beautiful mother energy directed toward. So again, just ask yourself what you care deeply about and mobilize your mother power to protect it. What is calling in your life to be fearlessly protected? The 
The second aspect of mother power and of spiritual living that we're going to look at today is the quality of being a peacemaker. Now, interestingly, as I've talked about on other Mother's Days in the past, the origins of this day, uh, Mother's Day, actually are rooted in the anti-war movement. Julia Ward Howe, who wrote the Battle Hymn of the Republic, later turned away from the militant attitude expressed in her famous hymn as the Civil War dragged on and on and she began to see the terrible price of conflict. So she began organizing what she called Mother's Peace Day festivals, which were celebrated annually on June 2nd. And her basic conviction was that though the world may be divided by war and conflict, there is something binding the mothers of the world together into one family. And just speaking to the mothers in the audience, how many of you have had the experience of being in a store and hearing the word mom and automatically turning around? We are mothers to all the children of the world. This is something that, this is something that we can remember that Mothering, the mothering energy is not just about our own children, but it's about all children. And that was the kind of mother energy that Julia Ward Howe was tapping into. So the idea of gathering um, was picked up and adapted by a woman named Anna Jarvis. And by 1912, many states, towns, and churches had adopted Mother's Day as an annual holiday. And it was in 1914 that President Woodrow Wilson signed a measure that officially established the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. So an important aspect of mother power, and in fact the very foundation that Mother's Day stands on, is the foundation of working for peace, of being a, peace mother, a peacemaker. I almost said peace mother, but I kind of like that word too, being a peace mother. So I invite you to ask yourself now, am I a peacemaker? Where am I doing a good job of keeping the peace? Where could I do a better job of being a peacemaker? And I think these questions are particularly useful right now when we're all feeling the stress and strain of being sheltered in place for, what, going on two months, maybe a little bit more. Um, it, it's difficult, uh, that, that ability to stay balanced and um, full of equanimity can, can sometimes be hard to maintain. So particularly now, I think this idea of where can I bring peace? How can I bring peace? How can I be a peacemaker is a very important one. And the final quality that we'll be looking at today, which is part of Mother Power, is giving. Now in the book, Mother Power, the author opened the chapter on giving with this joke from the internet. Do you know what would have happened if there had been three wise women instead of three wise men? They would have asked directions, arrived on time, helped deliver the baby, cleaned the stable, made a casserole, and brought practical gifts. <laughs> Mothers know how to give, right? They know how to get the job done. <clears throat> but all of us do, male or female, mother or not. And when we tap into our mother power, great things can be done. And this quality of giving, of course, is a spiritual quality, isn't it? This this quality of giving back and giving to others. Now in the book, the author tells stories, wonderful stories of a single welfare mom who started a food bank, of a mother who gave a kidney to a stranger who desperately needed a transplant, of a mom who started a nonprofit organization for families with a medical crisis that didn't have the funds to pay for treatment. Now these, of course, are big ways of giving, and most of us don't have the means, time, or ability to give kidneys or to start nonprofit organizations, but we all can give something. 
This world is always in need of more giving. And that giving can come in the form of time, talent, treasure, attention, and encouragement. Now these days during the pandemic, think about the fact that even just stocking grocery stores, bringing the mail or making deliveries literally can be risking someone's life. We are seeing wonderful, powerful stories of giving. So the third and final reflection question to ask yourself this week and throughout our lives is, how good am I at giving? Where do I give freely? Where could I give more? So looking at these three aspects of mother power, the qualities of being fearlessly protective, of being a peacemaker, of being a giver, someone who gives, we can see how marshalling these qualities has the potential to change the world. But before we change the world, we can change our world by drawing upon them, by acknowledging them, by cultivating them, and by using them. Because when we act out of our mother power, others are empowered too. So on this day, this Mother's Day 2020, on which we realize on a global basis, more than ever before, just how very interconnected we all are, let us touch each other with our strength, our faith, our energy, and our love. I'd like to encourage us all, women and men, to be mothers to ourselves, to each other, and to the planet, to Mother Earth. Mother power truly is a power that not only can move mountains or, as the example I gave, noted to change governments, it can save lives. And so it is. Thank you, God. So as we move into our time of guided meditation. To think a little bit more about these qualities of mother power, that beautiful mama energy that all of us possess. I invite you to sit back in your chair or your couch or your headboard, wherever you may be this morning and just feel that wonderful substance holding you, that you can relax into it. Nothing you have to do it just holds you. And as you feel that, remember that you are always held by the divine that there's nothing you need to do either, but to simply relax into it. So, as Michael's soft music draws your awareness inward, and as you take slow, deep breaths, Feel your attention going deeper and deeper within. And now that you are in a relaxed place, I invite you to imagine yourself in a place where you feel completely safe, completely restful, 
completely at peace. And as you imagine yourself feeling so comfortable in that peaceful, safe place, I invite you to think of a mother figure in your life, someone who represents love and nurturance to you. Now this might be your own mother, the mother who brought you into this world, or it might be another person who loved you like a mother, who believed you, believed in you, and who nurtured you. And as you think of that person, feel all the gratitude that you have for all that she did for you, for the ways in which she nurtured you, the many things she taught you, for the ways in which she encouraged you to do your best, be your best. Hold her in your heart and give her love. And just take a few moments to really anchor that feeling of being enfolded in mother love. The love you experienced from another human being who mothered you. The taste of the love of God. And know now that the expression of that divine mother principle is in you, whether you are male or female, it is a part of your connection with the divine. And know that Father, Mother God, Mother, Father God, God the Good, Omnipotent, has always been with you, will always be with you, and is with you right now. And just resting in that feeling, feeling your heart full and open. And knowing that you can return to this feeling of safety, peace and love, unfolding love, at any time you choose. And importantly, knowing that you can bestow that feeling of safety, peace, and love to others. Begin to gently bring your awareness back to the room that you're in, back to this place and time. Allow yourself to move your fingers or your feet to stretch, to take a few slow, deep breaths, and when you're ready, coming back to waking awareness and opening your eyes. I saw some good stretches there. All right.
I want to hear it, or at least I want to see you saying it. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we are an ocean of love. All right, hands up. Here at Unity Spiritual Center, we have an inspiring vision, an exciting mission, and compelling values by which we strive to live. Our vision is, centered in God, we co-create a world powerfully transformed through the growing movement of shared spiritual awakening. Our mission is, we are a creative, joy-filled spiritual community dedicated to healing, inspiring, and transforming the lives of all people through prayer, education, and love. And our values are, we are spirit-led, generous with resources, inclusive, joyously creative, and guided by integrity. And feeling inspired by our vision, vision, mission, and values, feeling enriched by what we've experienced here today and what we're about to experience in our Zoom fellowship hour following the service. Let's take time now to be a channel for enrichment through our generous ties and love offerings. And again, I want to <clears throat> thank everyone who has sent in a... Um, a tithe or love offering during this time. It's so appreciated. I can't even tell you how much it is. And uh, so I want to I want to thank you for that. And as Michael sings a beautiful song, we are going to ask you if you are able to to take the time to write out a check to USC or log on to our website at unitysf.org to make a donation online. Our expenses do continue during this time of sheltering in place as we look for ways to stay connected to you. And I just want you to know how grateful we are um, for your remembering us during this time. So let's take a moment now to bless our tithes and our love offerings, either in our hands or in our hearts, as we say our offertory prayer. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Every day you are somebody's child Share your love, let it grow in the wild Change a life just because you have smiled Every day you are somebody's child Life begins the baby's cry I know for a fact that it's true You won't remember although you can try It's just the mothers who do Who tied your shoes taught you to dance Set you free when you needed to fly. Give her a call, drop her a line before too much time passes by. Every day you are somebody's child. Share your love, let it grow. In the wild Change a life Just because You have smiled Every day You are Somebody's child Moments Get lost In the sea of time The forest Is missed for the trees Change is made with the help of a dime, a door unlocked with the keys. Bless
bless every minute, bless every hour. Thank God for the air that you breathe. Then give this day to the woman who bore you, and I'm sure that you will believe that every day you are somebody's child. Share your love, let it grow in the wild. Change a life just because you have smiled. Every day you are somebody's child. Every day you are somebody's child. Share your love, let it grow in the wild. Change your life just because you have smiled. Every day you are somebody's child. Oh. So nice, Michael. Thank you. You're welcome. So let us bless our yes. Actually, let's do the actually these little applause symbols. Let's do that. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Either the the icon way or the old fashioned way. Yeah. Thank you so much, Michael. All right. Well, let's bless our offering. We need to have a little praying emoji on Zoom too. You got to talk to your uh, your guy at Zoom, Michael. See if he can do the the Namaste prayer. <laughs> All right. Well, please join with me in blessing our offering. Spirit of the Living God, bless the acts of our hands, our minds, our hearts. May everything offered here at Unity Spiritual Center be a reflection of all that is good within us. Grant us the courage to patiently listen for the stirring of your presence. Enliven our spirits with humor. Fill us with reverence for one another and gratitude for our diversity. May unity beauty and truth be the fruit of all we do and so it is amen well <clears throat> i've got a few announcements before we bless the kids because i can see that there are kids online that we definitely want to bless but first i just want to remind you that there is a zoom uh, fellowship meeting directly following the service we'll take like a three minute break um, if you want to grab a cup of coffee um, but then we will come back and we will have our fellowship hour online on zoom and we'd love to see you uh, for that it's the same link don't have to do anything just just stay where you are and we'll join you uh, we are offering a daily word reading and guided meditation every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon. Um, would love to see you there. Again, use the same link. We're using the same Zoom link for everything. So this link that got you here today is going to get you to our daily word reading and guided meditation on Monday, Wednesday, Friday at noon Pacific time. And I also want to let you know that on our YouTube channel, um, I uploaded the special self-care workshop that Helen Nee did for us last uh, week. I think I saw Helen was on here. I don't know. Let's see. I'm going to check real quickly, see if she's still here. Because we appreciated that so much. Yeah, I see Helen right there. Um, Helen, if you want to... Um, Unmute, unmute yourself uh, just so that we can say thank you to you. You can um, you can hear our gratitude. It is. Thank, thank you, Mikey. I just muted and unvideoed. I'm like, I'm still in my pajamas. <laughs> Trying to help my, <laughs> well, my daughter this morning. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm I'm so glad that everybody who is uh, doesn't have a video feed is taking care of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Spot, but I did want to thank you so much for your awesome workshop. It was so great, and we really appreciate it. 
Thank, Thank you. you. It was a lot of fun. My daughter had great fun too. I mean, she was wonderful. She was great. Yes, yes. Um, Ellen was was assisted by her beautiful daughter Leia. So if you would like to check that out, it's on YouTube. And um, for those of you who asked for a guided meditation that could be accessed um, at another time, uh, and I know that for sure. Um, Josephine did. I want to let you know that I did record one and it's up and I'm going to try to record five of them. It's taken me so long is that I kid you not every time I sat down to record one the phone would ring. Um, you know, so I had some problem I, I would get through the whole thing and then found, find out I hadn't even recorded it. So it's been a bumpy ride to get that first one up but I managed it and I'm going to try to get five more up for you to um, access at your leisure. So check that out that's on our YouTube channel. Uh, we are continuing our second mountain book study and we're keeping this class open for as long as we go. It's on Wednesdays, actually, not on Tuesdays. It's on Wednesdays. That'll be um, through May 20th from 2 to 3.30. So again, if you'd like to join us for that, uh, the next couple of Wednesdays, we'd love to have you join us. It's been a really uh, interesting book and we've had great discussions around it. Uh, finally, I am either writing or recording a daily prayer, um, and I'm posting that on my personal Facebook page, uh, Instagram page, and also in our Ocean of Love community group page on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook and you'd like to have a private forum just to connect with people on Facebook, uh, do a search for Ocean of Love community group, and uh, we would love to see you in there. And now let's bless our kids. I definitely see Alonzo and Santiago. I don't know if there are any other kids that are with us. Um, I, I see. We have Alex. And Alex, yay, awesome. Let me see, I'm scrolling down to see Alex. Let's see. Come here. You're, all right, well, good. I, I can't see you, but I, I am taking your word for it. So let's, there, no, yes, there's Alex. Awesome. I see you. Great. So let us bless our beautiful boys um, and all the girls in absentia as well as our teens. Let's give them our blessing. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you. And we behold the presence of God in you empowering you to do great things thank you god thanks for all our uh kids to, uh for for coming and and letting us see your awesome faces and with that let us sing the peace song spreading that fierce, beautiful, and 
strong mother energy and mother love into our world. Let us go into this day and our week knowing that mm -hmm. the light of God surrounds us, the love of God enfolds us, the power of God protects us, and the presence of God watches over us. Yes. Wherever we are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And all is well. Thank you, God. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And do join us. We'll be back in about three minutes. Um, so great to see everyone. Thank you. Hey, Luke, are you there? Luke.